All right, this is Chris Summers and Chase Cossack's present demo presentation for the IoT Term project. Uh, the objective of this project was to create a integrated microcontroller board with sensors that access over Wi-Fi. You can access their data over Wi-Fi and it sends the data over Wi-Fi. The goal was to use one of the two given architectures that has the microcontroller plus two sensors, two to three sensors connecting to an access point, AKA a Wi-Fi network, and then it connecting to a cloud, and then the end user being able to access that cloud data, or the second type of architecture, which is the one that our group used, which is just connecting the microcontroller and the sensors to the Wi-Fi access point and then allowing the end user to very simply get the data directly from the access point and from the microcontroller. <clears throat> uh, for our project goal, or for our project specifically, we used, we wanted to create like a weather monitoring device of some sort, so we, we decided to use the humidity sensor uh, paired with the water level sensor used to check to see if it has water, to see if the water level sensor has water on it or not. We didn't actually care about the level of the water. And then the humidity sensor we discovered also does temperature and a couple other things like heat index. So we decided to use it with the water with the humidity, heat index, and the temperature, all three of those can be pulled from the humidity sensor. And the temperatures and heat indexes are both in Celsius and in Fahrenheit. For our hardware, we decided to use the an ESP32 microcontroller board. It was not our original first choice, and I'll talk about that later, but we decided that we ended up using it and it worked flawlessly. <clears throat> the sensors we decided to use, as mentioned before, were the water level sensor from the kit recommended that we, that we got recommended to purchase at the beginning of the year, and the DHT11 temperature and humidity sensor our wireless access point was a Linksys EA7500 router is a home and our home Wi-Fi network and then any computer with the with Wi-Fi capability was able to read from the ESP32 chip uh, here's a simple look at our wiring diagram and our our setup for the <laughs> water level and temperature and humidity sensor. Uh, the water level sensor will disconnect from the board, allowing it for a better range of motion to get in the water without having to dip the whole thing in there. It's just pinned to the, the board. Uh, the software used, we used Arduino IDE for programming the microcontroller. And in this, we used two specific packages. These specific packages were Wi-Fi.h and DHT.h. The Wi-Fi.h library was used to connect the microcontroller to the internet. Uh, it made connecting it to our home network very simple and also allowed for some pretty good configuration and sending data back and forth between the client and the servers. The And then DHT.h was a library used for the humidity sensor. Uh, this allowed us to use their functions uh, for getting humidity, temperature, and heat index for both Fahrenheit and Celsius. Uh, finally, for the client sides of this, so any computer accessing the information sent was uh, a, Python, a simple Python program was used using Python sockets. And the Thinker library was used to create the GUI that displayed the information received from the microcontroller. 
So now talk about some of the challenges that we faced. Our original plan was to use a Arduino uh, Wi-Fi microcontroller, um, but due to lack of knowledge or they sent, they might have sent me the wrong thing. I don't remember. Uh, we we ended up with just a regular Arduino Uno that did not have Wi-Fi capability. So to get around this, we tried using the ESP8266 chip to program to allow the microcontroller to connect to the internet. However, we could never get the the ESP chip to connect. We might have had a bad chip. And we don't know. We could never get it to connect to the Wi-Fi. Actually, we could never really get it to program correctly. Uh, so because of this, we were, we tried to purchase the Uno Wi-Fi, but because of the global micro can, or the microchip shortage, they were out of stock when we were purchasing them. So we just decided to make the switch to the ESP32 controller. <coughs> so now I'm going to go ahead and play the demo of our code and our microcontroller system working. Okay, this is Chris Summers and Chase Kosick's 590 Internet of Things final project. And uh, here we're going to demonstrate our humidity sensor and the water level sensor with the ESP32 microcontroller board. And here we have the water sensor and the humidity sensor wired into the ESP controller from the microcontroller. And I'm gonna plug it in here to the laptop and demonstrate that it runs. It is already flashed with the program. We're gonna go ahead and go to the serial monitor and it will say the values of the sensors that it is reading and we can change the sensor values by uh, dipping the water level sensor in some water you can see that the water level sensor changes into some thousand level values but we don't really care about the level we just care if it has any water at all so we just truncate that to one and then if we breathe on the humidity sensor it will it will go up in value as well. And that will change the different heat indexes, I believe, or it does not change the heat indexes just because it was, those are calculated from the program. And now we're going to, because we missed it, I'm gonna unplug it again and show what happens when it sets itself up, when it connects to the internet. Uh, I just missed it. Oops, put it back in. And here it'll say, it'll try to connect to the Wi-Fi, and then it connects to the Wi-Fi and prints the IP address of the microcontroller board. All right, next we're going to run into the other room here and connect using our client to pull the information over the Wi-Fi network from the microcontroller board. Okay, go. All right, so for the Python code, it has a host and a port for the ESP32 server, and it tries to connect to that via the socket. And then it sends this message, which is basically the format that it expects to receive data back in. And then it receives for the length of that section of data stopping receiving when it receives up to 16, which would be the amount we need here. And once it gets that, it splits it based on the dashes here and feeds this all into a Python uh, Kinter, uh, GUI to actually display. And so if we go ahead and run that, it will come up with the IoT weather checker, which will give us all of the values that we pick up with our sensor. And then down on the serial, you can also see it prints the chunks together data there as well. Okay, so moving on from the demo. Uh, after the demo, we actually left our, our microcontroller outside over an eight hour period of the day to collect data once every 30 minutes, so 16 total intervals. 
and basically we just wanted to see how the all of the different variables that we were capturing would like fluctuate over the day. So here are the temperature and the heat index. You can see the temperature in Celsius and the temperature in Fahrenheit, and same with heat index that we captured, which are four of the variables that we sent over Wi-Fi. And these were sent every 30 minutes back to the computer, where we then save the data so that we could make these charts. And you can see how the temperature kind of fluctuates a lot over the day. And then once it hit nighttime, it dropped steadily about uh, 20 degrees Fahrenheit and about, I would say, about 10 degrees Celsius or so. And then it kind of evened out there. And if we kept it running, we could assume that it was only going to get colder over the night. And you can see also how the heat index and the temperature very much like are in line with each other with the heat index just being a little bit lower since it's cold outside under the temperature. Then here is the humidity percentage and the water sensor which was the value of if it rains or not. And so for raining we basically return a zero or a one depending on how much water is found. So the ones would be when it was found to be raining and the zeros would be when it was not. It was raining off and on a lot through the day where we tested this which ended up being pretty good for testing. You can see how the humidity percentage a little bit coincides with if it was raining or not and how overnight the humidity percentage definitely spiked. And that's probably just from evaporation throughout the whole day. And then you could see the big chunk of rain that we got and then it was kind of off and on since other than that for the rest of the day. And so the final kind of plots that we got was the throughput speeds and we tested this at from a range of 5 meters from 0 to 25 meters with 25 meters being the last actual range that we were able to get it to work with with our uh, ESP32 to our computer. Um, so we got throughput speeds steadily declining with the further we got away which would make sense and the AP and the computer that was sending the data were both or receiving the data were both at the same point and then we were moving further away from there to test that through out into our backyard of our house to see how far we could get. And you can see how the speeds are kind of similar from zero to five meters, and then after that, there's big drop-offs every five meters change until you're basically not sending any data anymore. And you can also see how the speed just almost grows exponentially, or the time uh, grows exponentially as we got further away from the AP where we were sending the data. Oh, and this was just tested with uh, Python code, basically testing the way that we were connecting to see what speeds we were able to achieve. So in summary, uh, using an ESP32, Arduino IDE, and Python code, the team was able to successfully create a weather monitoring device with the ability to transmit the data over Wi-Fi. Here's uh, another screenshot of what we're actually outputting to the GUI to display our data, and that is just what we chose to do with it. You could do all sorts of things. You could save values in a database, which we did not end up using a database, or you could uh, have it actively updating to check. And you, you could do a lot of different things with this data once you send it over the Wi-Fi to a device. Basically, it's open to manipulation from there to do whatever you want to do with the inputs you're capturing. And what we found was a little bit of a limited range using the SP32. Uh, it was not great for like distance, but it definitely did work for what we were trying to use it for. However, it left a lot of potential for future work with one of those potentials being uh, an improved range or kind of figuring out what you could do to make that range a little bit better. So for uh, future ideas or applications, uh, if the sensitive parts of the sensors could be protected or waterproofed, then it could definitely be used as an outdoor sensor as long as the Wi-Fi has the range. So kind of what I was speaking on a little bit in the slide before, but like if we were to make a plastic case or something that could hold this instead of the open breadboard like you saw that we were using, it would definitely work a lot better as a weather detector since one of the things we're detecting is rain and that is kind of a bit of an issue with an open breadboard, but we, we made it work by uh, holding the water sensor out more than, than it is uh, in the bread, like on the breadboard itself. It could also be used as a portable sensor if it was connected to a battery. Uh, that would be a good thing for like camping or hiking or anything like that. And if if we were to do that, something like an app for easier viewing on the phone would also make a lot of sense. I know that one thing you could potentially look into is be uh, if it broadcasts its own Wi-Fi signal, connecting the phone to that to view it. 
So for example, I have a camera that does that where you can transfer data from the camera to a phone based on the camera outputting a Wi-Fi signal that lets you then view images on it and transfer data between the two. Um, and this could also easily work with IoT home devices to get ultra precise weather information for the house and like super localized information for where you live and what your devices would need to know. And we could also potentially add other sensors such as wind speed or anything else you might want to know in a weather sensor, uh, which would allow for more home weather information. So there's definitely a lot of expanding we could do upon this to get further into uh, kind of aspects that we'd want to touch on with a weather device. But we felt that we achieved our goals that we set out to do and in a, in a pretty efficient and nice manner. So that's pretty much all that we have. Uh, thank you all for your time. and. I appreciate you all listening. <laughs>